Here it is, Mother. Oh, it's still in the shop. They had to sell it. I'm so relieved. You didn't you admire it, Clarence? Well, it is unusual. You know, I saw this down there the day before I got sick. I was walking through the bric-a-brac section, and it caught my eye. I was so tempted to buy it. And the whole time I lay ill, I just couldn't get that in my head. I don't know how it would stay down there so long without somebody snatching it up. <laughs> oh, yes, I Mother, isn't John home yet? I haven't seen him. Why? Well, you know we've been working, and John went down to collect our money. No, that's fine. Oh, Clarence, I've got a secret for just the two of us. Who do you think is coming to visit tomorrow? Cousin Cora and Mary. Yes, I know. How did you know? I happened to get a letter. Oh, John, did you ever see anything so sweet? What is it? It's a <laughs> medicine for. Dr. Bartlett paid us off, didn't he? Yes. That's a relief. While I went down to McCreary's to get the pug dog for Mother, I ordered the daisiest suit you ever saw. Dr. Bartlett owed us $16 a piece, and the suit was only $15. is not that lucky? Well, come on, give me more money. Clarence, Dr. Bartlett paid us off in medicine. You let him pay us off with that old beneficent balm? Well, he, he thanked us too. For our services to mankind. What about me? I belong to mankind. What about my suit? You'll just have to find another suit. I can't find another suit. They're making the alterations to this suit. I've got to pay for it this afternoon. Fifteen dollars. Pay them in fifteen bottles of medicine. They wouldn't take it. McCurries don't sell medicine. It's too bad. Here comes Father. I have to brace him for that fifteen dollars. I hate to do it, but I've got to. That's all. I've got to. Well, I'm not going to be here when you do. I better hide this somewhere. Anyway. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. How's your mother, Clarence? Where is she? She's all right. She's downstairs with Margaret. Oh, okay. I'm home. <laughs> Father, mother will be well enough to go to church with us next Sunday. That's fine, Clarence. That's fine. <coughs> Have you noticed I haven't been kneeling down in church lately? Don't let your mother catch you at it. I've got to have a new suit of clothes. Clarence, you're not even making sense. But a fellow doesn't feel right in cut down clothes, especially your clothes. That's why I can't kneel in church. I can't do anything in them you wouldn't do. That's a damn good thing. If my old clothes make you behave yourself, then I don't think you should ever wear anything else. <laughs> oh, no, but, but you're you, and I'm me. I want to be myself. Besides, you're older, and there are things I've got to do that I wouldn't do at your age. Clarence, you should never do anything I wouldn't do. Oh, yes, look, for instance, suppose I should want to kneel down in front of a girl. Why in heaven's name would you want to do a thing like that? Well, I've got to get married sometime. I've got to propose to a girl sometime. Before you're married, I hope you're earning your own clothes. Don't get the idea in your head that I'm going to support you in a white tooth. Besides, at your age, Clarence. Oh, I'm not going to get married right away, but for $15, I could get a nice suit of clothes. Clarence, you're beginning to talk as crazy as your mother. Oh, hello, Minnie. How are you feeling? I'm fine, Claire. You don't have to hurry home from the office every day like this. Business the way it is. No use in going to the office at all. You haven't been to your club for weeks. Can't stand the damn place. Minnie, you do look better. What did you do today? I went for a long walk, and I dropped in to call on Mrs. Whitehead. That's fine. It was the most fortunate thing. Claire, who do you think was there? Mr. Morley. Morley? You, you know that young minister who substituted for Dr. Lloyd on Sunday? Oh, yeah, bright young fellow. Preached a good, sensible sermon. It's the only time I ever saw you put five dollars in the offering plate. Ought uh, to be more ministers like him. I could get along with him. I wouldn't need trouble at all. Well, you know, Claire, his parish is up in Audubon, way up above Harlem. Is that so? Isn't it wonderful? Nobody knows you up there. You'd be perfectly safe. Safe? Penny, <laughs> what the devil are you talking about? Claire, I've been all over everything with Mr. Morley, and he's agreed to baptize you. Oh, he has? Young whippersnapper. <laughs> I am nice of him. We can go up there any morning at all, and we don't even have to make an appointment. Vinny, you're planning a lot of things <coughs> for no reason at all. What makes you think I'm going to be baptized at all? You said you would. Now, Vinny. You did. You did. You, you stood on this very spot and you said, I'll be baptized. I promise. I'll be baptized. What if I did? Aren't you a man of your 
what? Vinny, that was under entirely different circumstances. We all thought you were dying, so naturally I said that to cheer you up. <laughs> and, and fact, the doctor said that's what cured you. It seems to me pretty ungrateful of you to press this matter any further. Amy, you were safe in trunks. Vinny, you were sick when I said that. Now you're well again. My, my being well has nothing to do with it. This is all right, Mrs. Day. Yes, that's fine, Margaret. Thank you. You, you gave me your word. You gave the Lord your word. If you had seen how eager Mr. Mormon was to bring you into the fold, and, and you're going to march up to his church some morning before you go to the office and be christened. And if you think for a minute that I'm going to let you... What is that? I'm going to let you have this integration of... I demand to know what that obnoxious object is. It's perfectly obvious what it is. It's a pug dog. What's it doing in this house? I wanted it, and I bought it. You paid good money for that? Yeah, we're not talking about that. How much did you pay for that atrocity? I don't know. I said Clarence down for it. Clarence? Mm -hmm. What did you pay for that? I didn't pay anything. I charged it. Charged it? <laughs> I might have known. How much was it? Fifteen dollars? Fifteen dollars for that eyesore? Don't you call that beautiful work of art an eyesore? This will look beautiful sitting on a red velvet cushion by the fireplace in the parlor. If it sits in the parlor, I won't. Furthermore, I don't even want it in the same house with me. Get it out of here. You're just using that as an excuse. You're not going to get out of this room until you set a date for your baptism. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'll never be baptized as long as that idiot monstrosity is in this house. Oh. All right. All right. He goes back this afternoon, and he's christened first thing in the morning. But, Mother... You heard your father say that he'd be baptized as soon as I got this out of the house. Now, you hurry right back down to the crew to make sure they give us... They, they, they credit us with fifteen dollars. Oh, Mother, while I, was, while I was at McCree's, I happened to see a suit I liked very much, and the suit was only $15. I'm afraid your suit will have to wait until after I get your father baptized. No, I meant that since the suit costs the same as the pug dog, if I exchange the pug dog for the suit, then... The suit wouldn't cost your father anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 